so just when you thought COVID couldn't be more, you know, scarier sounding with all the, you know, BA5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12, 40 variants, the Delta, Alpha, Omega, Zeta, Beta, Quadraca. I don't even know what variants there are these days. I mean, we came to terms to realize that no matter how many variants, you know, we're coming to the point of an endemic, there's going to be multiple variants, just like the flu. And, you know, I, like I said, and I put the disclaimer out, you know, to save my ass on YouTube here. I put the disclaimer out to, to state that I'm just showing you all the data that I'm uh, and, and analyzing so that people are aware of the information out there and take it as you will. I'm just showing you what they're saying. I'm showing you what they're reporting. I'm not making any claims. I'm not being pro-vax or anti-vax or anything like that. Um, I, I'm i being told that, you know, vaccines are very, very, very effective and they stop the strain at uh, at, at endpoint and go get vaccinated. Uh, but I'm just showing you all the information that is being presented out there. And do as you will. Do as you will. But... Uh, this is kind of since this is kind of interesting that needs to be pointed out and uh by interesting I mean scary. So we've been questioning for a while about where exactly the origin of the coronavirus first came effect and you know we were told that be, at the very beginning that it came from a bat at some sort of Chinese market in in Wuhan. That turned out to be questionable, and considering that there's a laboratory in the in in the uh, Wuhan province of China uh, that's currently researching coronaviruses, and they develop uh, dangerous, you know, strains of flu and 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 dangerous infections at this laboratory that's funded by NIH, that's funded by Fauci, that Fauci has lied to multiple times about gain of function researching. Well. Here it is again, and we've seen we've seen a couple more cases of uh, gain of function research in in our backyard here. There's you know universities all across North America that are doing similar things, but here Boston University apparently takes the cake. So the New York Post po uh, points out Boston University researchers claim to have de uh, developed new, more lethal. COVID strain in a laboratory. Trust the science. Trust the science. We've made a COVID strain that's even more lethal. Trust the science. Science is your best friend. Um, to which I say, it's nice to know that, you know, our medical researchers are doing a fantastic job in their time of need. You know, with all the stuff about cancer and uh, other known infections or even the common cold. We have no real further development on it, but Hey, at least we can make lethal COVID strains more possible and possibly make that even more exposed to the general public, making it even worse. And we repeat this all over again. Yay. This is just so, so happy. So thrilling. Um, so here's Fox News saying the exact same thing. Boston University researchers claim to have developed new strain of more lethal COVID strain in laboratory. Researchers at Boston University add a spike protein from the Omicron variant, which the original Wuhan strain has an 80% kill rate. Like I said, it's nice to know our scientists are, you know, using their time wisely. You know, instead of actually benefiting the general society, like I said, cancer, common cold, maybe making diseases less vulnerable to people, maybe helping people build their immunity better, but then that would be bad for the pharmaceutical industry. So just how crazy that is. Um, and there's the known liar right there. There's Anthony Fauci that has lied notoriously about gain of function research, even though there's multiple articles reporting that all of these institutions have been gaining money to create these deadly viruses to expose to the general public so we can treat them. 
as precaution. You know, we're just going to create more deadly bio uh, biochemical weaponry using viruses and uh, and diseases to spread onto the general public to plague them. And then we'll just, you know, somehow create a vaccine in a couple days. <laughs> and then Pfizer can, you know, go to the World Economic Forum and a veterinarian can get rich again. Yay! Researchers at Boston University say they have developed a new COVID strain that has an 80% kill rate following a series of similar experiments first thought to have started the global pandemic that began in China. The variant, a combination of Omicron and the original virus in Wuhan, killed 80% of the mice infected with it, the university said. Boy, it sounds like they weren't wearing masks. It sounds, I, I guess they weren't double, triple shotted then. Man. I, I guess they. I guess uh, Anthony Fauci didn't yell at them some more. Keith Olbermann should have went over there and scolded those mice for you know doing their own research. How dare you! <laughs> when mice were only exposed to the Omicron, they experienced they experienced mild symptoms. The research was conducted by a team of scientists from Florida and Boston at the school's National Emerging Emerging Infections Diseases Laboratories. Yeah, that's not that's not a troubling name. <laughs> National Emerging Emerging Infectious Diseases Laboratories. Boy, that does not sound sinister at all. <laughs> they extracted the spike protein from Omicron and attached it to the strain of the first detected at the onset of the pandemic that began in Wuhan, China. They then document how the mice reacted to the hybrid strain. In mice, while Omicron causes mild, non-fatal infection, the Omicron S-carrying virus inflicts severe disease with a mortality rate of 80%, they wrote in a research paper. This new strain has five times more infectious virus particles than the Omicron variant, researchers said. In a statement, the university stressed that the uh, replicated strain was less dangerous than the original strain. First, this research is not is not gain of function research. <laughs> I'll say that again because that's hilarious. First, this research is not gain of function research, meaning it did not amplify the Washington State SARS COVID two strain uh, virus strain or make it more dangerous. In fact, this research made the virus replicate less dangerous. So if it has an 8% kill rate, it's actually less dangerous, just like how nuclear war is beneficial for humanity and not peace. We live in a world of crazy, backwards, upside down. We live in a Twilight Zone episode, ladies and gentlemen. Um... And I, I, I guess I feel like Rod Sterling just pointing it out. I'm just the narration that tells people exactly how stupid this all is. Um, which is kind of cool. I actually liked Rod Sterling. Um, secondly, the research was reviewed and approved by the Institutional Biosafety Committee, which consists of scientists as well as local community members. The Boston Public Health Commission also approved the research, Furthermore, this research uh, mirrors and reinforces the findings of other similar research performed by other organizations, including the FDA. Ultimately, this research will provide a public benefit by leading to better targeted therape uh, therapeutic interventions to help fight against future pandemics. Yeah, just a little, you know, foreshadow there. Future pandemics. Just like how we'll learn from this pandemic that, you know, mass, um, you know, not to trust Anthony Fauci, not to trust a computer nerd who barely graduated college, who made his foundations off of lying and cheating and stealing and manipulating people, not to trust them for the benefits of medical science. Maybe actually trusting doctors. Maybe we can learn from that. Maybe learn from the actual technological people that help invent the virus technology. Maybe we'll learn from that. Uh, COVID-19 was first, 
first believed to have come from a wet market in Wuhan, though many believe the virus was engineered at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Again, just pointing out the obvious there. You have an Institute of Virology that designs coronavirus. And the fact that known scientists that were part of the research have even admitted to this. There's a CNN video that I wish I had right now. There was a doctor that was part of, that was a virologist that even admitted that this came from a laboratory. This came from a laboratory because we were experimenting on coronaviruses funded by Fauci, funded by the United States. We were doing gain of function research. But that's just what he said. I'm not allowed to say that. And uh, vaccines rule the world, according to YouTube. The World Health Organization continues to face criticism <coughs> for its handling of the crisis in its early, most pivotal days. The Omicron variant is highly transmissible, even in those who are fully uh, in, uh, vaccinated. The spike protein is responsible for rates of infectivity, According to researchers, other challenges to the virus structure determined in its deadliness. So, there you go there. Nice to know that our trusted scientists are benefiting and doing good in the world by making the coronavirus even worse. You know, we I I I don't I don't understand the medical world. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. I don't have any medical background. I just, you know, listen to other doctors. That's why I, you know, listen to people like Dr. John Campbell. That's why I've listened to mainstream media while listening to Dr. Robert Malone. I want second opinions. That's kind of the whole point of science is to get second opinions. You know, when you have a theory, when you have something that is introduced, you're supposed to challenge it. You're supposed to tell that scientist, hey, show me the proof. Show me the evidence. Create some studies, create some analysis. And that proves whether that theory was correct or not. They did it with Einstein. They did it with Galileo. They did it with Thomas Edison, uh, Nicholas Tesla, all of them. That's how science evolves, ladies and gentlemen. And it's just, it's just disturbingly eerie to know that behind closed doors, we're somehow predicting the future and preventing future pandemics by making this pandemic even worse. And like I said, scientists, it's good to know that you're, you know, using your time beneficially. You know, instead of creating a, a, a renewable energy source that could actually benefit the planet and people, uh, you know, creating more cheaper hemp products or, uh, you know, doing studies on, on how to treat people better with cancer. Like, there's so much stuff that they could be doing right now, but hey, let's let's give a bunch of mice a worse strain of COVID that's 80% killable so that possibly it can leak out and then we can start this pandemic all over again. And what we learned from the original strain, what we learned from the original pandemic, all the faults and figures and the lies and the uh, misguidance that we've been told, God no, God no. We haven't even hold accountable to the people that were notorious liars. Bill Gates has not been held accountable. Dr. Fauci has not been held accountable. He's still doing press conferences and television appearances like nothing's happened. Like he didn't lie. Oh, it was just a miscalculation. I'm sorry. No, it was, it was perfectly calculated. You purposely lied to the general public. You purposely lied in line step with the pharmaceutical industry. You purposely lied... Uh, uh, to line yourself with the authoritarian government. You purposely lied to the general public and the general public suffered. That's why they did protesting. That's why the truckers came on board. That's why people railed against the mandates. Not because they're anti-vax or anti-science or, or crazy conspiratorial nuts with their tinfoil hats. No, because they've seen the effects of lockdowns. They've seen the effects on individuals. They've they've gone to doctors they've checked medical studies i know they did their own research how dare we how dare we because i remember back in the day when i was in school doing your own research was considered studying <laughs> that's how dangerous the world is studying is considered dangerous 
you know, if you want to find out something, if you want to learn more about a certain topic, you did your own research. You went to a library, you checked out a book, you looked it up, you went on to Wikipedia, you went on to Google and you searched a bunch of articles. That was called studying. That was called reading up on something. That was called research. That's what you're supposed to do on a daily basis. But because of COVID, because of the pandemic, because of this backwards turn of turnaround Twilight Zone world that we in right that we're in right now, this parallel universe nightmare that I'm completely trapped in, doing your own research is now the most dangerous thing imaginable. The thing that I grew up with in school, the thing I grew up as a child, that I still continue to advocate for today. I still advocate for people do your own research because in this world, you know, we don't have journalists, unfortunately. We don't have uh, a media structure that informs people. We just have a media structure that propagandizes and, you know, shouts out opinions and and just sows the discord for uh, manufacturing aggression. We have no real structure. We have no watchdogs. We have no uh, people that are holding people accountable. That comes down to us. When the fourth estate completely fails on the general public to inform people about the nefarious evils of, of the establishment, that comes down to us. That's why I'm doing the research. That's why I'm looking into COVID. That's why I'm looking into the Russia-Ukraine scandal. That's why I'm looking into all the stuff that's happening within politics. And people and people say that's d- dangerously disturbing. That somehow I'm a, I'm a nutcase. I'm an idiot for doing my own research, for looking into articles, for studying, studying the situations and maybe learning about new things, maybe learning what's actually happening with the virus, what's actually happening from doctors, from medical professionals, hearing different opinions and building upon that. And like I said, I'm showing you this all, all this information. So you get all the, all the facts, all the information that is being presented out in the open, and that you can make your own decisions. But YouTube will tell me that, you know, vaccines are amazing and and they rule the world and everyone should get vaccinated because it'll stop transmission. Just the world that we live in, ladies and gentlemen. 